What would you give to have a body that could stop traffic, the kind that made Arnold Schwarzenegger Mr. Universe? That brings stardom to football players and professional wrestlers. Well, to get just that kind of body and to get it in a hurry, hundreds of thousands of young men are taking anabolic steroids. Now, in the short run, the physique can be fabulous, but the long run, well, there the payoff can be a hideous mental and physical breakdown and even death. Tonight, a former Mr. Universe, in telling his story to Tom Gerald, brings a powerful warning to young men and women. Using steroids to get a body you would die for just might kill you. This is the avenue of extroverts and eccentrics, Venice Beach, California, where people come to see and be seen. It's called Muscle Beach where bodybuilders perform in an open-air gym called The Pit. Muscle Beach is also where steroids took hold and became popular. It's where Steve Mahalik came to get his steroids to build a bigger body. And I went out to L.A. and I went to one of the most popular gyms out there um, where everybody was training. And they were very, very easy to get. It was, they do work. They have an, uh, that's their problem. They're so tempting. It's like candy, you know. It tastes so good, but then it's going to give you a lot of problems later on. Anabolic steroids help make Steve Mahalik a champion, a world champion bodybuilder who reached the peak of competition before the same drugs which took him up brought him down, and he hit bottom in a mental institution, a broken man. All the big glory in the beginning, all the big gains you think you're making, all the happiness quadruples in pain and suffering at the end. Anabolic steroid abuse is a real serious problem in this country. It represents what I like to call a silent epidemic. Silent because nobody talks about it. Epidemic because there are well over a million people in this country who are abusing anabolic steroids. And Dr. Gary abuse. Wandler, an author on the subject of steroids, there says their use can have deadly right. consequences and lead to strange side effects. The male acquires female characteristics. They get a high-pitched voice. They develop breasts. Their, their testicles atrophy, they stop producing sperm. The female, on the other hand, becomes masculinized. They get a male hair pattern, they get an Adam's apple, they get a deep voice, they get menstrual irregularities, they get acne. Here's a home videotape of Florida bodybuilder John Defendus, first okay. without steroids. Here's the same body, he says, just two months later, on steroids. Anabolic steroids are synthetic male hormones. They were developed in the mid-1930s to aid the healing process in people suffering from malnutrition and other debilitating illnesses. In the mid-50s, it was discovered these drugs could build muscle and strength in normal people. But overuse led to disastrous side effects. In 1991, the distribution of steroids was banned by federal law. But the genie was already out of the bottle. Athletes in virtually all sports using steroids had developed strength and speed beyond their wildest dreams. Steroids became synonymous with champions. Anabolic steroids seemed the answer for Steve Mahalik. As a kid, he would lift weights, but he still looked pudgy. Bodybuilding became an obsession to prove himself a man to his father. I wanted to succeed or fail on my own merits and prove to my father and to the world that I could be something and someone. Competing without steroids, Steve was winning some titles. But then to be more competitive, he moved to L.A. where steroids were easy to get, and he began using and abusing them. Water-based steroids can be directed uh, right exactly into the muscle. It takes a little guts to do it, but you just stick that needle straight into the muscle, right into the muscle, each muscle group, sometimes up to 14 injections a day. Steve gained 40 pounds, bringing his weight up to a huge 260 pounds of solid muscle. He was winning title after title, but he still didn't get the recognition at home he so eagerly sought. Unfortunately, when I won the title, my father could have cared less. Never, never attended, never came, never congratulated me, never made a big thing about it. Nothing. Steve trained ah. harder and harder. Six hours a day on a regimen of eight high-protein ah. meals and 15 pills and 14 injections ah. of steroids. After years of steroid abuse, Steve discovered a major side effect, aggression. He had it big time. Did you it, fight or did you oh, yes, threaten? Oh, yes, absolutely. If a guy said anything to me, if he looked at me cross-eyed, I'd either rip him out of his car or I'd make it a point to smash his totally brand-new car with my fist. It was crazy. I mean, you had to, like, watch him like a little kid. 
You didn't know when he would lash out at someone in a restaurant. If someone was smoking, he would get up and just smash the cigarette into someone's face. I can remember one incident while I was with my wife and my young son, and she was dropping me off to work, and there was this big truck behind us, beeping, beeping, beeping. Some gentleman cut us off as we were going across the turnpike. Steve jumped out of the car. And I went absolutely crazy. I tore out of my car, and there was a big, giant railroad tie. And these things weigh three or 400 pounds. I picked it up effortlessly and smashed through it and smashed it into the side of his truck and dented the side of his truck. Now, obviously, this is not the behavior of your average human being. Steve's rages continued, but he was now taking up to 100 times the amount of steroids used for legitimate medical reasons and also experimenting wildly with new untested versions of the drug. He'd put anything into his body to make his muscles grow. We found out that uh, certain types of snake venom combined with anabolic steroids were making the muscles grow larger. Pain and injury were inevitable. I had such migraine headaches every day. I used to have to pack my head in ice almost every day. My, my head was exploding, nosebleeds constantly, constantly nosebleeds. My blood pressure was up through the ceiling. My cholesterol was way over 500. It was like totally insane. Pumping iron and pumping steroids, he rose to the top in 1975, winning one of the biggest titles for muscle men, Mr. Universe. Steroids had paved the way to stardom. He mixed with celebrities and became one himself. And there were other celebrities like him. Arnold Schwarzenegger admitted steroid use in a 1988 interview. There's hundreds of different things that athletes take, uh, depending on what their needs are. I myself have won many competitions with it, and without it, it made no difference. Not so, according to former pro wrestling star Billy Graham, who says he spent many hours training with Schwarzenegger. There was no way you could attain a body or a physique to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger without the use of enhancing anabolic steroids. Graham also claims first-hand knowledge of steroid use by wrestling champ Hulk Hogan. Hogan has refused to talk to 2020 and has denied taking steroids for bodybuilding. Hulk Hogan has taken steroids from the late 70s and through the whole entire decade of the 80s and has lied about it. Uh, yes, when I were in my gym, I had, had many pro wrestlers come to me for anabolic steroids. Uh, pro wrestlers, it's, uh, it runs rampant within professional wrestling. But to be successful in pro wrestling, it's an absolute must to take steroids. Billy Graham was known as superstar for two decades in the wrestling ring. Today, he admits steroid abuse throughout his career, which he says has left him crippled. <clears throat> well, my physical condition is, uh, is horrible. I have, I have a hip made out of steel. I have ankles that don't bend. They, uh, my right ankle has been fused. There's seven or eight bolts in my right ankle. Uh, it's third down and six. Professional football stars began falling to the ill effects of steroid abuse. Football players probably have an absolute need for anabolic steroids because not only do they have to be bigger, but they must be faster. They must have functional muscle. They can't just gain weight. Ed Gantner wanted to be a pro football player, but he wasn't big enough. He began abusing steroids in high school. Eventually, he played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. When his football career failed, he became a wrestler. His mother remembers how steroids changed his personality. It was always like he was an explosion about to happen. That was the feeling that I had when I was around him. After 10 years of steroid abuse, Ed needed a kidney transplant. He came home to recuperate at his mother's house. Ed then began experiencing one typical side effect of steroid withdrawal, depression. He returned home um, not really wanting to be at home because that signified to him that uh, defeat. Ed Gantner shot himself in his mother's kitchen on New Year's Eve a year ago. He was 31 years old. Abuse of the drug can set off a chain reaction of acceptance. Steve's steroid abuse spread to those who were closest to him. John Defendus was his protege who idolized Steve and won Mr. USA following Steve's example. He didn't actually come out and say, use the steroids, but, you know, he was pretty much an advocate of steroid use. He thought steroids were good and that they would make you bigger. The chain continued to a third generation. Mary Holroyd was John's pupil. She turned on to steroids. My hair grew much more quickly. My nails grew more quickly. My voice got deeper. Um, I was very aggressive. This is Mary at 18 going to her high school prom. She weighed 120 pounds. 
She started bodybuilding less than one year later without using drugs. Then she switched to steroids to keep up with her competition. What was the most negative thing you found about steroids? I looked like something that didn't know what they wanted to be, this huge, muscular, massive, 170-pound woman. I mean, none of my clothes fit, and I just felt like a freak. Both John Defendus and Mary say they've kicked the steroid habit and are working to sound the alarm to others who may be working out in the gym. There's always somebody in the gym who has access to them and will sell them. Because they are so easy to obtain, the biggest steroid problem today is that an estimated one-half million teenagers are using and often abusing the drug. It's now the, the pre-high schoolers are using it. Believe it or not, 14 and 15 year olds are seriously thinking about how they can use it to get on the high school team. Dr. Howard Kirpin is a kidney specialist and sports medicine expert who's treated patients for steroid abuse. These are dangerous drugs and educational programs have not demonstrated a decrease in their use. In fact, one study showed an increase in use after an educational program was instituted. The problem, according to Dr. Kirpin, is that teenagers find the drug so attractive they're drawn to it, even after being warned of its dangers. That was the case for 18-year-old Eric Elifson of Bakersfield, California. He wanted to make the high school football team. He began using steroids. His father found out. He and I did confront him about it. Uh, we had a discussion on it. Yeah, yeah he had, did admit he was taken. He agreed that he'd get off of them, and I, I'm, I'm sure he did. As in Ed Gantler's case, severe depression set in. Eric had been off the drug only two months when it happened. He had uh, went to the front yard, and, and he had taken the extension cord out of the garage, and he had... Uh, wrapped around a limb of a tree in the front yard right outside the front door and he hung himself. Even though cases like Eric's are well publicized and widely known, Brian Dobbs, a 17-year-old, dreams of becoming a champion bodybuilder. He says he's about to begin using steroids. I know steroids can cause anger, depression, it can cause rage, and it can send you, you know, it can send you to, to your death. I mean, I, and obviously, but it just doesn't matter. I said it myself when I was young, so I would have done whatever I had to do, and death was secondary to winning. The night of champions in 86 was to be your pinnacle, your exit uh, on a high note from the business. A week before the contest, I woke up in the middle of the night with this extreme pain in my right side under my ribs. They took x-rays, sonograms of the area, and uh, the doctor brought out the x-rays and it showed me a grapefruit-sized tumor on my liver. And uh, had I waited another hour or so, uh, I would have been dead because I would have bled internally. Warned that using steroids again meant certain death, Steve spent the next five years in anguish and depression, eventually checking himself into a mental hospital. I looked around me and my, my marriage was destroyed. My son was, 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 was all messed up and upset. My life was upset. I had lost my job. I had sold my gym. I had, I had no muscles. I was an absolute wreck. Steve had lost almost 100 pounds and was so ashamed of his appearance, he would disguise himself with sunglasses and a beard. Finally, a friend convinced him to enter a detox program. It took two years to get over his addiction. Now he's trying to put his life together, and he's making an effort to be a more involved father. He's supportive of his own son's goal of becoming a professional hockey player one day. But he still spends much of each day in the gym and clings to a dream of stepping on stage, flexing in the spotlight, and winning another national bodybuilding title. I honestly believe I can do it. I've come back from being in a mental institution. I've come back from all sorts of adversity. And I absolutely am going to prove that it can be done because I'm going to compete next year against these monsters and do it without being biochemical. Tom, how can parents tell if their son or daughter is using steroids? Few of youngsters are working out and they begin bulking up their muscles very quickly, say over a period of a couple of months. Uh, that's a very suspicious sign. Another is behavioral uh, changes. Steroid users uh, and abusers become very aggressive. Right. Now, if, if this is so bad and, and addictive, 
Why don't we hear more about authorities responding to it? Too often society has accepted it, including parents, because the immediate effect is it seems to be working. You mortgage your future the years down the line when you have major medical problems with steroids. That's the big problem. Yeah, borrowing from the future is, right. is a rough thing. Fascinating. Thank you, Tom. Certainly. Hmm. Well, next, Leona Helmsley in prison. We'll tell you about her first days behind bars right after this. <laughs> 